I'm gonna tell you right now what you need to do to put yourself in a position to win every single game you play. It's pretty basic. If you guys want to win as many games as possible and increase your chance of winning a national championship, here's exactly how you do it. On offense, you need to take the highest percentage shot possible. On defense, you need your opponent to take the lowest percentage shot possible. I know that's really basic, but think about that. If consistently every offensive possession you take the highest percentage shot possible and consistently every defensive possession you make them take the lowest percentage shot possible, do you know what the result is from that? You win. And you win consistently. I have the humility to know there's a very good chance I'm not going to say a single thing to you guys today that you don't already know and you haven't already heard. But I've been around the best players and coaches in the world for most of my life and I realize that there's always going to be a difference between what you know and what you do. And if you guys want to be the best players that you're capable of, and you want to be the best team that you're capable of, each of you has to work every single day to close that gap between what you know and what you do. You know the only result of coming in and shooting game shots from game spots at game speed every day before and after practice? You know the only result even possible from that? It's improvement. It's getting better. You make 300 free throws every day before and after practice. You know the only thing possible that will happen to your free throw percentage? It goes up. It's the only thing possible. Would you be a better shooter? Guaranteed. Would you be a better player? Would you be more valuable here at UConn? Would you increase or decrease your chance of playing professionally after? So the positives completely outweigh. I don't think there's a single negative that could be from doing that. And every single one of you knows that. I didn't see anybody's head explode. You guys all know that if you choose to come in and put in extra work and give your best effort, if you do that consistently, you know all of the positives that will happen. Then the only question you have to ask is, are you doing that and are you doing it every single day? Basic, right? I don't think I surprised you by saying that. You knew the answer to that, right? Is that easy to do? Is it easy to come in every single day and make an extra three? No, it's not easy to do. If it was easy, every single player on the planet would be doing it, but they don't. So there is that difference between basic and easy. If you think that it's easy to show up every single day and be the best version of yourself, you think it's easy to hold the guys next to you accountable to be the best that they're capable of being, it's not. You know how hard that is. But that's why the reward will be something that very few people ever get to experience. Because very few people are willing to make the sacrifice to do the things that I'm encouraging you all to do. See, it's been my experience that in every area of life, but especially in basketball, complexity undermines execution. Like the more you try and make this game more complicated than it needs to be, the harder the game becomes. Uh, this is a very, very basic game at its premise. Now, one of the most important things <clears throat> for you guys to understand is there is a difference between basic and easy. Those things don't mean the exact same thing. What it takes to be an elite level player is very basic. But as you guys know, it's not easy. Shoot, what it takes to win a national championship is very basic in theory, but it's arguably one of the hardest things for anybody to ever do. So there's a difference between basic and easy and you have to know those. I can't promise you that you'll be All-American. I can't promise you you'll play professionally. I can't promise you you'll win uh, a national championship. What I can promise you is doing these things every day greatly increases the chance that those things happen. And that's all any of us should be in the business of doing, is trying to get the statistics lined up in our favor. I mean, ultimately, you all have the North Star of winning a national championship. And you have the tools and you have the resources, you have the talent, you have the coaching staff, you have everything you need to be able to accomplish that goal. But in order to do that, it comes down to two things. There's two things that define whether or not you guys will be able to win at a consistent clip and whether or not you guys will be the ones that cut down those final nets. And those two things are preparation and performance. Everything comes down to preparation and performance. You have the talent, you have the resources, you have the coaching staff to be the best of the best. And now it's completely up to you guys. And, and in order to do that, you have to hold yourselves accountable and you have to take full responsibility for every decision you make. You can't blame, you can't complain, you can't defer, you can't deflect, you can't make any excuses. You guys have the keys to the car and whether or not you do anything with it is completely up to you. I'm a huge believer there's only two things in this world that each and every one of us can control 
100% of the time. And that's our effort and our attitude. Each and every one of you has the ability to control your effort and your attitude 100% of the time. And you need to learn how to let go and untether from the things you have no control over. And I want to encourage you guys to put all of your emphasis into those two things. Your effort and your attitude. Don't worry about anything else. Block out everything else. Play present means that you are focused on the moment that's right in front of you. You don't worry about the past and you're not anxious about the future. If you're worried about the turnover that just happened or the missed shot that just happened or the referee's failure to make a call that just happened, if you're wasting your energy on something that just happened in the past, that means you are not fully present to invest that energy in the present moment where you can still actually make a difference. If you guys can learn how to play present, then you'll be able to actualize your physical potential. You'll be able to actualize and maximize your athleticism and actualize and maximize your skill. And being in the present moment means three things. It means you only focus on the next play. It means you only focus on the controllables. You control the controllables. And it means you only focus on the process. If you can do those three things for the vast majority of the time you're on the court, then you will be the best player that you're capable of. How do you choose to respond after a missed shot? After a turnover? After referee misses a call? After a teammate makes a mistake? That's what's called bounce back. Elite players have what's called bounce back. And it's something you can measure. You measure someone's body language, facial expressions, and effort after a play does not go their way. After you miss a wide open three foot uncontested jumper, which of course is disappointing. No one wants to miss that shot. But now that play is over. It's in the rear view mirror. It's in the past that is unchangeable. So what is your reaction after you miss an easy shot? Do you hang your head? Do you pout? Do you have bad body language? <clears throat> or do you sprint back on defense and try and earn it? That's what being mentally tough is. The definition of mental toughness is be able to block out all distractions and focus on the next important thing. That's what mental toughness is. It has nothing to do with running until you puke or doing a wall sit to your legs, you know, or shaking or, or somebody in your face MFing you. That has nothing to do with mental toughness. Mental toughness means that no matter what is going on in the world, you have the ability to hone in and focus on the next important thing. Any emotional currency you invest into something that you have 0% control over is completely futile. It's a waste of your time and effort. But let's look at the things we do have control over, your effort. Working hard is a choice. You all choose whether or not you work hard on any given possession or any given day or any given practice. But here's what most people don't own. There has to be another side of that coin. If working hard is a choice, then not working hard? Yeah, that's also a choice. Not working hard is a choice. And it can't be a choice that you consistently make if your goal is to be the best player you're capable of or collectively be the best team that you're capable of. So giving the best effort possible as consistently as possible has to be the standard. So you can't have it both ways. And as logical as that sounds, and I don't mind if you roll your eyes at that because it sounds so obvious, but here's what happens with most, most players. When you work hard, you made the choice to work hard. When I call you out for not working hard, you're gonna make excuses. I was tired, I wasn't feeling well. He didn't do this, he didn't do that and we make excuses, uh-uh. If you're gonna take the credit and the praise when you work hard, then you have to be man enough to accept when you choose not to. When you're humble, it means you stay open to coaching because there is a tremendous amount of basketball wisdom and experience in this room. Humility is what allows you to stay open to coaching. Humility is, allow is what allows you to say no matter how good of a player you are, and you guys are elite level players, no matter how good you are, humility is what says, I can still get better. And it takes a lot of humility to be able to accept the role that might not be the role that you want it to be. And I know that's one of the hardest parts about playing at this level. Because when you guys were in high school, you may have had a more prominent role than you have now. And you probably want that role now. And that's a good thing. I hope that drives you. But you need to make sure that you embrace and star in the role that you have while you work relentlessly to earn the role that you want. Each and every one of you in this room, and this includes the staff, you need to know your role on this team. You need to embrace your role on this team. 
and you need to work your backside off to star in your role on this team. And here's the hard part. Even if your role's not what you want it to be, even if your role's not of your preference. See, your role on this team is what Coach Oates and the rest of the staff need it to be for the team to be successful. So you need to work to star in your role to the best of your ability, but then you come in during the unseen hours to work towards a bigger role. If you don't like your role on the team, if you think you should be a starter and you're not a starter, there's nothing wrong with thinking that. But you have to embrace being a non-starter and make a maximum contribution every single day. And then you come in after hours during the unseen hours and you work on the areas of your game that might give you a potential to get more minutes or to start. You star in the role you have, you work for the role you want. And when you guys look in the NBA outside of the top 20 players, everyone else in the NBA to some degree is a role player. They have one or two specific skill sets that they perform at an elite level. And that's one thing that I want you guys to think of, is think of what's the skill set that you bring to the table that is elite. And then it clearly it needs to be within the role that you have on this team. It needs to fit into the overall puzzle of what this team needs for you to do. But that's also what you'll hang your hat on when you leave here, is that specific skill set. See, basketball is not an equal opportunity sport. You know who gets to shoot more? The better shooters. You know who gets to play more? The better players. It's not equal opportunity. We don't divide the number of shots by 15. Better shooters get to shoot more. So then what do you do if you want to shoot more? You become a better shooter. How do you become a better shooter? You put in the work during the unseen hours to earn the right to take more shots or to get more minutes. Star in the role you have, work for the role you want. That's when the cameras aren't rolling and the cheerleaders aren't dancing. What you do then determines the type of player that you'll be. It's when you choose to come in an hour early or stay an hour late to work on a certain move, work on your game, or get up extra shots. It's when you choose to have the discipline to put yourself to bed at an, a better hour so that you have the requisite sleep so that you feel prepared the next day to give your best effort and make a maximum contribution. So it comes down to preparation. If you want to be a good shooter, there's only one recipe for it. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Now they have to be game-specific reps. They have to be reps with perfect footwork and perfect shooting form. This is not about casually going in and shooting for a couple hours. This is going in with intention and purpose. And that's the thing I, I got from Kobe. Repetition is the oldest and most effective form of learning and skill acquisition on the planet. You want to get good at anything, but specifically the skills of basketball, it comes down to repetition, repetition, repetition. With minimal exception, you know who the best shooters are on the planet? The ones who put in the most reps during the unseen hours. It's cause and effect. It's not luck. You know, if, you, if we look at the, the spectrum of players that go in and shoot, on the, on the high school level, you've got the kids that go in and, you know, they got, maybe they even have one of the, the shootaways and they, they made 500 shots. They barely broke a sweat. They're cool with that. And on the other end, you have Kobe who every single shot, he's not doing anything from a catch and shoot. Everything he's doing, he's making a specific L cut or a V cut. He's trying to get open before he even earns the right to shoot. This is, he's not in it to play horse. He's in it, the reason he wants to be able to make these shots is because he knows he's gonna have an all NBA defensive player on him. And if he doesn't even get open to get the ball, there's no shot to take. So everything he's doing, he is running through at game speed. Who do you all think is the best shooter to ever play this game? Curry's at least in the conversation, right? So at that Kobe Bryant Skills Academy, Curry was one of the uh, college counselors. And I was just meeting him for the first time as well. Now this is before he kind of blew up and became the Stephen Curry that we're all aware of now. This was after his sophomore year at Davidson. And at the end of that first workout at the Skills Academies, he came up to me and he tapped me and said, Coach, will you rebound for me? Because I don't leave the gym until I swish five free throws in a row. Think about that for a second. As a standard of excellence, he will not leave the gym until he swishes five free throws in a row. You guys are elite level players and many of you are elite level shooters. Can you admit that's a pretty high standard? Swishing five in a row? It means you swish four in a row, you still hit the rim on the fifth one, it still goes in. You're still five for five. You're still mathematically perfect. That wasn't good enough for Steph. He'd start over. And if memory serves, I don't think it ever took him longer than 15 minutes to swish 
five in a row. So you guys believe he's the best shooter on the planet. I agree with you, but it's not by accident and it's not by luck. It's because he's willing to hold himself to a high standard. And I share that with you because I'm not telling each of you that you shouldn't leave the gym until you swish five in a row. You come up with your own standard of excellence. You come up with your own way to police yourself to be the best that you can be. So you guys got to figure out what are the standards you need to set for yourself to be an elite level player. And it doesn't have to be five swishes in a row on, on free throws. You got to figure out for yourself what it needs to be. See, good organizations have what's called vertical accountability. That means these guys sitting behind you with the polo shirts on, they tell you what to do and you guys do it. That's vertical accountability. That's mediocre at best. If you all want to be championship contenders, you have to have horizontal accountability, which means you get on him when he's not doing what he's supposed to do. He gets on you when you're not doing what you're supposed to do. If the only leadership and accountability in this room comes from the coaching staff, you guys will never be the team that you're capable of becoming. It has to come from you all. And holding someone accountable is not necessarily designated by who the captains are or by who plays the most minutes or who gets the most headlines or who the best player is. If you're the 15th man on this team and you're not even on scholarship, that doesn't matter. You're still an integral part of this team and you have every right to hold everyone else in the room accountable. And you need to, you need to lean into that. The reason people hold you accountable, whether it's the coaching staff here or it's the guy sitting next to you, it's because they care about you and they care about this program. Holding each other accountable to the highest standard of excellence and to the core values of this program is the number one gift you can give a teammate. Now, it doesn't always feel that way in the moment. When a teammate's coming down on you and a teammate's holding you to a high standard, it's understandable to be de defensive. But just because something's understandable, it doesn't mean it's acceptable. And you have to rise above your ego to be able to take accountability from a teammate. See, if I know you're capable of more and I let you slide, that means I don't care. So you should be thankful to have someone or a group of someones that watch your every move and are on you every second of every day. That you give 100% 99 times and on the 100th time when you choose not to, that's the day they bust your chops. You should be thankful for that. Because holding someone accountable, it's not something you do to them. It's something you do for them. On the court or off the court, someone is always watching you and you need to behave accordingly. The moment you think you can turn it on and off, when coach is watching, that's when I'll give my best. When the cameras are on, that's when I'll give my best. When we're playing a big time opponent, that's when I'll give my best. If you believe you can turn on excellence, turn on commitment, turn on preparation, if you think you can turn it on and on like a life, light switch, I'm telling you, you just undermined your ability to be the best player you're capable of. You behave in a manner as if someone is always watching you because at your level and playing at a program like this, I promise you, someone is always watching you. And especially since each of you have the goal of playing professionally, if you think the only time someone's watching you is when you're in games or if there's a, a, a person here watching your practice, I'm telling you that's not the case. Someone is watching every single thing you are doing.